So Frank Lampard has been appointed as Everton manager on a two and a half year deal. However, today is all about me and if I was manager of Everton. All right, boys, welcome back to the channel. Now, first things, apologise about the throw. COVID has started to kick in a little bit and I'm struggling, but I felt all right and I've actually done pretty well with this Everton side today. So I wanted to show you what I have done. Now, the premise behind Fire was manager of series is I take over a club for one full season. I don't make any transfers now. Just for this one with Everton, I, I have signed uh, Donny van der Beek, put him in the database as his, his deal is about to be completed. But that's the only thing that I've done. I've not messed with any other transfers during the summer or January. And the idea is that we have a look at the squad, put a tactic together, tactic links available for you to download down below. And let's see how we've got on this season with Everton. Okay. As you can see, first three games of the season, um, we've started with three wins. And the three wins were Tottenham, no, sorry, Liverpool at home in the first game, then Tottenham away, and then Manchester City at home. We've started pretty well. I was a little bit worried after we got beat to FC Utrecht. We did have a little bit of an edgy squad, edgy first team 11 with sort of like the Euros and Rich Allison away with Brazil and stuff. Um, but still, yeah, that was a little bit of a worry, but I've stuck to it. Now, I have been tweaking with the tactic. The tactic has stayed the same all the way through. We've just tweaked with a couple of instructions as the seasons, as sort of like pre-season, the start scenes developed. The main thing was getting more support up to Dominic Calvert-Lewin and also trying to win the ball higher up the pitch. Right, let's dive in and let's have a little look at the tactic. Now, this is what I have created. I've created a, a four, it says four two four three two one, but it's, Kind of a 4-4-1-1. Now, the tactic link is going to be down below. So if you want to get involved in that, there's the link in the description links you to the FM Scout link, which I've got. And there's, uh, there's two ways of downloading it, either through Steam or downloading it straight to your computer. But basically, <clears throat> just with what Everton have at the moment, I think with Dominic Calvert, Lewin coming back, I think it was important to not to shove Rich Allison out wide, but I do find... I think Everton need to be a little bit more solid in the middle of midfield. With the arrival of Van der Beek as well, and potentially now Deli Alley, they're going to go with probably, Frank will probably go with a 4 3 3 or a 4 2 3 1, or even this, sort of like an isometric 4 4 1 1. And I do think Rich Allison starting on the left hand side and then tucking in, coming in onto his right foot is the best way to go. Okay, so sweeper keeper on support, Jordan Pickford, pretty standard. Now I've gone with Mason Holgate as my right back. There is. A bit of competition at right back because they've also got obviously Seamus Coleman, John Joe Kenny, and the youngster Nathan Patterson. But however, in particular in the game, Nathan Patterson is not quite ready, and I would be surprised how much game time he plays. And because of how I want the squad to set up and the team to set up, I've gone with Mason Holgate. Now, I think he played right back when he first came into the Everton side a good few years ago now, but has sort of like become more of a centre half. So what I'm thinking of is because he's quite athletic, he's pretty decent on the ball, I'm going to put him as right back on a wing back support. Now what I have got him is, I've got him crossing from deeper, I've not asked him to overlap too often, I've also got him marking tighter and sitting narrow. What I want is him coming into here, rather than getting up and in, involving Andrews Townsend. We have got Andrews Townsend on a winger as well, so it's not as if he's going to be cutting in that much. I want him to kind of be tucking in. We're going to allow Mikalenko on the left hand side to push forward a little bit more. So I want Mason Holgate to kind of come in and kind of make a little bit of a back three when we've got the ball. Two centre-halves, they've been a little bit all over the place, Everton, because of injuries um, to Mina. Um, but I do think the best combination is Mina and Godfrey. So I've put Mina on as a stopper, someone who can get up into sort of like number nines and get into that sort of like aerial threat, dominate the ball, being aggressive. And then I've gone for Godfrey. I'm not the biggest fan of Michael Keane. And I think Godfrey, as a cover player, sweeping behind a very aggressive Mina would be the best way to go. And on the left, we've gone for Mikalenko. There is Fabian Delph out there, but obviously he's kind of more of a midfielder, inverted wing back. Um, and I just think with Rich Allison cutting in, we do need a little bit of width down this left-hand side. I've not gone crazy. I don't want him bombing forward. My idea is that we, we stay quite defensively solid. Um, we've got some good attacking players in here, even with Dakare, Townsend, Van Der Beek, Rich Allison, Calvert-Lewin. I don't necessarily need him being overly aggressive. I think Everton have obviously lost Lucas Digne, um, who was very aggressive and but wasn't great defensively. So I'm just got him as a wing-back support, Mikalenko, just someone who can sit in, no further instructions, and will get forward and overlap every now and again. Okay, the midfield three, 
I've gone for Andrus Townsend on just a basic winger on support. My idea is that they've got players of sort of like um, Anthony Gordon, the youngster. They've also got Damari Gary that can fit in on this right hand side. I'm not asking for anything flash, just someone who can kind of, like Andrus Townsend kind of does, works very hard, can get up and down, get balls in the box to, uh, to the strikers, maybe a Rich Allison at the back stick, a third man run from Donny van der Beek, and obviously Calvert Lewin is going to be a threat. In the mid midfield, we've gone for Dakare. Now, I have asked him to get further forward. He does look dangerous when he, he's finishing and his final pass have not been very good. And a lot of times they've gone into really good areas. There was a, a segment against Aston Villa where it was a 2v1. And I think he was trying to release Dominic Calvert-Lewin in the first half. And it was a really, really sloppy pass. But because of his physicality, his pace and his power, I think him on a box-to-box -box and really surging forward into the penalty area, I think would be a really good role for Dakare. In the middle of midfield, alongside him, I've just gone for Alan. Now, he's probably more suited to a, a, a ball-winning midfielder, but he's quite good at shifting it. I'm not asking anything in particular for him to do. I want him to hold his position, so that's why I've got him on defend. I want him to drop in here, support the two centre-halves, and just fire balls out to the wingers, looking for Mikalenko on the overlap getting the ball into Van Der Beek's feet, getting the ball into Richarlison's feet, getting the ball into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I'm not asking him to do much, but I am just don't really need him to be up here, overly aggressive. I just want him to sit in there, get the ball, shift it, work through the thirds. That's what I want Alan to do. Now, Donny Van Der Beek, I did start Donny Van Der Beek as an advanced playmaker, but I wanted to recreate the best form that he showed, and obviously that was the final season at Ajax, where I think he's got like eight goals and eight assists, I think, in the final season. Looking at a lot of his goals, a lot of his goals are late runs or third man runs with a, a false nine or a central forward, sort of like dropping in, picking up the ball, laying it off to a central midfielder, and then a ball in behind, and he's running on the end of it. So I wanted Donny van der Beek to do that for me. So we've gone with a shadow striker. And then on the left-hand side, we've already spoke about, we've gone for Rich Allison. No different instructions for any of the midfielders, obviously, apart from Dukari, which I've already mentioned, get further forward. And then Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I think there's a case to be presser, target man, advance forward. I think the good thing about Dominic Calvert-Lewin is he can do everything. Um, he can hold up the ball well. He works hard. He works the channels. You want him to go, get into the box. You want him to attack the penalty area, the penalty spot. Um, so that's why we'll have gone for a complete forward on attack. All right, shifting over to the tactical style. We've gone for mentality positive. I think the Everton fans are creating that little bit of, not attacking play, but they want to see their team on the front foot. So that's why we've gone for positive. In possession, we've gone for a wide attacking width. We want Richarlison coming out from the, sort of like a wide area. We want uh, Townsend as well with, we want space. We want those defenders opening out so it leaves a little bit of room for Dominic Camet Lewin to work in the penalty area and also that late run from a Dakari or a, a Van der Beek. So we've gone with wide. Approach play, I've just gone for an overlap on the left because I'm thinking that because of Rich Allison coming in here, that might just encourage Mikalenko just to get around that little bit more but without being overly aggressive. Now what I am going to do is I have actually changed this. It's slightly shorter but it's actually slightly more direct. Now I have been changing this in-game and it's actually worked very well in the last game against Manchester City. So slightly more direct. I think that's probably the way they're going to play, especially in the midfield. They've got not a lot of craft in there in terms of players that are going to demand the ball and dictate the ball. These guys are pretty much in transition and pretty much going to play in transitions by getting the ball and giving it to these sort of like creative players quickly. And I also want to see that directness from Dakara getting up. I don't think they're necessarily going to be a possession-based side. Early crosses, because we've got Richarlison, who's good in the air, coming on that left-hand side. We've got runs as well from Dakare. That's why we've also got play set pieces on. Because of the, the height of Richarlison, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Dakare, um, delivery of Andros Townsend, um, Yeri Mina as a, as a centre-back. Also, um, Holgate is pretty good in the air, obviously being a, naturally probably a centre-half. So I think there's opportunities to throw um, free kicks, corners into the penalty box. Run at defence, because we've got... Richarlison, Andrus Townsend, Mikalenko, we want them to, to sort of like excel our key players, in particular Richarlison, to run at the defence a little bit more. In transitions, we've gone for sweet, we've gone for short kicks, but we're trying to get that ball up quickly in terms of getting the ball out wide to the two wide men into sort of like an Andrus Townsend and Richarlison early so we can counter, distribute early quickly so we can counter, and obviously when possession lost, counter. And I think Everton do want to see it. They've been bored of us with the, the Rafa Benitez tactic. 
Ancelotti wasn't great in terms of excitement either. So I think it's time to see Everton pressing and working and getting that ball back, especially in the home games. They'll, the, the, the Goodison Park crowd will want to see the team on the front foot. Out of possession, we did start on standard, standard high line of engagement, but I've just changed it to higher just to get Dominic Calvert. And I did see him dropping a little bit too deep in a couple of the games early on. Um, it was actually coming and helping his team as far back as sort of like 25 yards out. So I just thought having a high line of engagement might just see him push up the pitch a little bit more when we haven't got the ball. We want to squeeze that. We want to try and dictate, play, get on the ball as quickly as you can. Forcing the opposition out wide. It's kind of a general 4-4-2, 4-4-1-1 where we're, we're staying nice and narrow. We've got brilliant height as well in terms of Holgate, um, Mina and Godfrey. They should be able to handle crosses into the box if we're forcing play out wide. Use, a tar use tighter marking. It's a bit of a personal preference, but I think, especially in centre midfield, I do want to see the fullbacks, the central midfielders, Donny van der Beek marking that maybe defensive midfielder. I do see, want to see them tight and, more importantly, getting stuck in, really putting pressure, defending de aggressively. I think Evan will have been a little bit too passive, a little bit too easy to play against over the last couple of seasons um, when they're not completely at it. So we want the team on the front foot once again. So I think that use a tighter marking and get stuck in. There will be red cards, no doubt, but I think it'll balance itself out and work in my favour over the course of the season. And then prevent shot of distribution. I've just done that because we've got Takare, we've got the three defenders in um, Godfrey, Mina, and uh, Mason Holgate, so I would like that keeper to sort of like put it up the field, might give us the opportunity to get the ball and to get the ball down, maybe a win ahead, get the ball down and play. All right, that is the tactic. As I said, I've linked it down in the description below. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. What would you do if you were Frank Lampard? There is the arrival of Deli Alley, which I think creates a potential extra problem. He may then go with a 4 4 3 3. I'm not too sure how he would fit a Deli Alley in here. I think the nice balance at the moment. I suppose the only thing is there's not a great depth in terms of a number 10. So you could maybe play a Dominic van der Beek as an eight sometimes and then go with Deli Alley or rotate the two over the course of the season. However, Deli's not been confirmed yet. So I thought it's probably worked in my favour at the moment because it set up this tactic that at the moment, as I said, we are leading the Premier League. Um, three wins out of three. I'm not quite sure if we will make it that far after 38 games for another 35 games. But let's find out. Let's see how we got on at the end of the season. OK, right, here we are. And as you can see, Everton have finished second. We finished four points off the top of the table. I think the most impressive thing is we've conceded 31 goals. Only 31 goals. We've lost eight, drawn four, won 26 76 goals scored. We scored more goals than Manchester City. However, we couldn't quite win the title. But I think Everton fans would take that. I think that's this has been one of... I was hoping for like maybe a top six. I would have probably taken top seven, been the best of the rest. Um, but we've had a really, really good season. And looking at the statistics, as you can see, goals, goals, goals. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, 20. He's played all 38 games. 24 goals in the league. Three in the Carabao, two in the FA Cup. 29 in all competitions. If we just move over to the squad and if we saw by goals, as you can see, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, 29. However, Donny van der Beek in a shadow striker role, 22 goals, 16 goals, 13 assists in the Premier League. What a return for Donny van der Beek. Um, I've always found it weird that Manchester United have not used him enough. Um, I think his days at Man United are done just purely on the perception However, if Man United had used him as a shadow striker when they signed him and used Donny Van, uh, not Donny Van der Beek, Bruno Fernandes in a deeper role that is kind of playing now under Van yet, we probably would have seen a different side to Donny Van der Beek. So there he is, 22 goals, 18 assists for the Toffees. Rich Alisson's come in and done a job for us as well. 18 goals and 16 assists. Then there's a huge drop-off, which I was kind of expecting in terms of, uh, because of the quality the, you know, the fourth attacking player is Andros Townsend, played 31 games, only one goal, eight assists. A bit of a disappointing season. I think what you could look at is potentially improving there. However, Anthony Gordon is coming up the ranks, so maybe he would be an option for maybe next season and beyond. Assist-wise, Townsend got eight, to be fair. Gambit in the central midfield had a decent season. He will be as well as come in. Numerous starts, probably playing in a wide variety of different positions there. He's played winger, he's played both sides, helping out the team a lot by the looks of it. He's pretty versatile. Obviously, in real life, he's 
he needs a, a, a big kick up the ass. I'm not quite sure he's going to be Everton quality, um, but <laughs> it'll be one of those players that's going to be very, very hard to get rid of, basing on his salary and what's he going to have another two and a half years left on his deal. Average rating wise, Donny van der Beek, the star of the show, 7.44. Richard Evans Pickford's had a really good season, playing all 48 games and only conceding 42. Ben Godfrey as well has had a good season. Yerimina Mikolenko has had a decent season as well. He will get better and better in the game. He's had a tough start, obviously, to life at, at, at Everton. I think ideally it would have been good for Dinya to stay and him be a little bit of a backup. Not to be case, he's kind of been thrown in the deep end a little bit. I think you may see Fabian Delph, if he gets himself fit, you may see him play a little bit more at left back. And then the results, um, the defeats, if we just go sort by Premier League, the defeats have come, oof, seven out of the eight have come away from home. So home form is really good. I think that's what Everton surprised them. The only home defeat was Norwich at home, which was a bit of a killer. Now, because I've kind of pushed the same 11 all the way through, I think January would be a difficult spell just because of of the amount of shame out of games. As you can see, a lot of games came in November and December. But there's nothing in there that's alarming. What is good, though, is that we've beat Liverpool home and away. Obviously, I I beat them at the start, first game of the season, and then we've picked up a 1-0 win at Anfield. Richarlison penalty, absolutely fantastic. We beat Manchester United twice, 2-0, keeping two clean sheets. We beat Tottenham once, Chelsea once. We've beaten Tottenham twice. We beat Man City. No, we lost to Man City away from home. We absolutely battered them in terms of XG and chances. So yeah, there is, there is. if I was manager of, one of my probably best achievements on this little mini-series so far. If you have enjoyed this episode, please drop a like. If you would like me to cover any other team, let me know your thoughts down in the comments as well. We much appreciate you. Go try out the tactic. I think as long as you've got a decent shadow striker and a really good complete forward, someone who can do a little bit of everything for you, I think you can get this tactic team this tactic to work at any level all right guys thank you very much for watching take care see you later